are many sources of outdoor air pollution. However, in urban areas, the single biggest source is road transport. My name is Dr. Nerese Lee. I am a member of a campaign called Doctors Against ESO. We are a group of doctors, nurses, scientists and healthcare professionals and we're working together to fight for an environment that is clean so our children can grow up without being affected by the side effects of air pollution. We know that diesel cars produce bad gases, so why can't we just replace all these diesel cars with uh, electric cars? The fact that we've got so many trees, is it helping us or does it really not matter? What else can we do to help reduce the air pollution? We noticed that the busy roads around Brentford and the diesel cars have been polluting all the air around us and it has really been affecting our breathing. We had lots and lots of questions, so we brought a doctor in to help us. Welcome to the Green Dragon Norris, thank you for coming. For people with asthma, are diesel fumes worse than petrol fumes? Mm, so people with asthma are more affected by air pollution because of the underlying problems they have in their lungs already. And when you compare diesel cars and petrol cars, we know that they both emit pollutions, but um, diesel engines tend to emit more pollutant particles than petrol particles there. So they are worse for people with asthma. How do doctors know what's happening in people's lungs? Hmm, that's a really good question. So we can do lots of different tests. So sometimes we do tests on children to see how well they can breathe in and breathe out and how well they can blow. And that's a way of knowing how strong your lungs are. And there are also different tests that we can do. Sometimes we get children to cough up a phlegm <coughs> sample, so just like a spit sample from your lungs. And then we can look at the little cells inside the lungs to see what's happening inside. What do diesel fumes do to um, the lungs? So diesel fumes um, contain a lot of different pollutants. So some of them you guys know already call nitrogen dioxide or NO2 or particular matter, which is PM. So you've got PM10 and PM2.5, depending on how big the little particles are. So these fumes can affect human pretty much every stage of your life. So if we start from the beginning, right when you were a baby inside your mum's tummy, it can also affect you since since then basically so it can affect the way the baby grow the baby might come out a little bit smaller than it should be the way the baby's lungs and brains grow can be affected as well because of the amount of pollution in Brentford itself the fact that we've got so many trees is it helping us or does it really not matter because of all the pollution that's already around us so that's a really good question like you said you are in the middle of kind of surrounded by a lot of busy roads all the tra cars, traffic, buses going past it, emitting lots and lots of pollutants. And yes, you're exactly right, the trees are very helpful, um, but there's only a certain amount that the trees can do. So the more important thing to do is to look into whether we can make the air itself actually cleaner rather than just relying on the trees. But seeing it all like the grass absorb um, and take in all the bad air. So it's a very similar concept to the trees, so grass is still plants, so it's still helpful in that sense and obviously the more green area you've got, the less traffic you have in the area as well. But the ultimate problem is still coming from the traffic, so that's still what we need to focus on. But the obviously more greener areas mean less traffic and cleaner air. With all the construction sites around Brentford, do, do those really make an effect to, effect to the pollution rate around here? from all the building works that they're doing. There's lots of dust being generated as well and you've got lots of trucks coming in and out as well. So trucks is part of traffic and a lot of the trucks are run by diesel as well. So along with all the dust particles, all the bits and bobs put together, it will increase the pollution rate. What other things around us are also affecting our health? Mm, so you get pollution produced outdoors, so like you said, traffic from your engines and also indoors as well. So other outdoor things will be things like factories, um, anything that's burning coal or burning fuels. Um, indoors will be things like cooking or burning candles. When you blow off the candles, you see the black fume going up. Um, heating as well can be, can be a problem, so any, any open fire as well. Apart from asthma, what other conditions are aggravated by air pollution? So for anyone who's already got lung problems and so not just asthma but other respiratory breathing problems, they can also be more affected by it. And we also know that in older people, people who already have things like heart disease or stroke and things like that, they can also be more affected. What is the best way to travel to help air pollution? 
Mm, so the best thing to do is obviously not use any cars. Walking more, cycling more, using less cars, using more public transport. And if you must use cars, maybe get um, people to pull, like carpool together, so you're sharing the car. Um, have cleaner engines, so less diesel engines and more electric cars. And also raising awareness, because we, sitting in this room, we all know what air pollution can do to us, but a lot of the people in the public don't actually know, and they're just blissfully breathing in all the bad air without knowing what they can do to the body. So if we spread the word and everyone joins, our campaign and everyone does a little bit to make the air cleaner and together we can make a huge difference. We're tomorrow's adults and today's children. Our future lies within your hands. I want air pollution to stop now. This is serious. It can't wait until I'm Prime Minister. Until I started this project I had no idea that air pollution could be so bad. Did you?